Okay, so I mean, before I begin, uh, let me just quickly give you a review of um, of some of the things that we've already covered. Um, so the chapter really was generative classifiers or generative models. Uh, All right, so generative classifiers, okay? Uh, um, if you recall, uh, within generative classifiers, we uh, define the vector X as the feature vector, which is actually a D-dimensional vector, um, which is defined by default as a column vector. Um, and this I indicates that this is the ith feature vector point uh, within the training data. Um, and so Y sub I's, are the uh, class labels. Um, so, so there seems to be a, quite a bit of lag. Can you all hear me perfectly? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. screen or screen on lag are If you give me a minute, I'm going to for a moment. Let me go, but I'm going to go YouTube. Let me go and talk to them. Just give me a minute. Fareed bhai, you take over kar sakte hai. Masla hai. Fareed bhai, you can take over kar sakte hai. Fareed bhai, that's the reality of, or uh, sad kena chahi hai, that's the reality of working from home. Um, achha ri. The reality of aisi sad hoti hai, sad. Reality measure said, okay. okay. So these Y sub I's uh, are the class label uh, corresponding to this feature vector X sub I. And the set D we said was the training data. Uh, and within the training data, uh, we had um, N points available. Okay. Now, what was the difference between discriminative classifiers and generative classifiers? Uh, in discriminative classifiers, the inherent model uh, that we assumed was was the pdf of y given x so we assumed a model on the class labels given uh, the feature vectors for example uh, we talked about the um, linear regression model and in the linear regression model um, the pdf of the class label uh, which was actually a continuous variable given x was actually gaussian okay uh, if you logistic regression for example uh, this was actually a PMF, the PMF of Y being equal to one or PMF Y equal to zero. Uh, given X was modeled as a sigmoid function, right? So those are discriminative classifiers. On the other hand, in this chapter, we're talking about generative classifiers. So instead of assuming a model on the class label condition on X, we rather assume a model on the features given Y. And that's the reason why they're called generative models because knowing this model, you would be able to generate the features given the class labels. I see example, I'm a class manager, for example, one of the things I said, Kiri, if you know what a dog looks like, you can try to draw a dog. You can try to create a dog. Um, um, similarly, if you were trying to differentiate between two languages, that's another example we use. If you're trying to differentiate between two, uh, two languages, one of the ways you could do it uh, is through the discriminative classifier or discriminative classifier may, um, you would um, um, just learn how two languages are different, right? And that's how you'd separate between them, right? On the other hand, for the generative model, you would learn the languages themselves and that would allow you to uh, differentiate between the two of them. And at the same time, you would be able to generate the language. Some of them you could speak the language itself, right? You can understand the structure of the, of the language itself. So those on, on, on a very, very, uh, top level uh, were the differences between a generative classifier and a discriminative classifier. Now, what we want to do next is, is we're going to talk about Gaussian models, right? So this is uh, section three of my notes, I, which I believe I've uploaded already. Um, so this is section three of my notes. Um, and the Gaussian models we're going to consider are going to be, once again, generative models. Um, and the assumption 
is going to be that the as opposed to the naive Bayesian classifier. Remember, naive Bayesian classifiers. Um, and in the naive Bayesian classifier, all of the features were assumed to be uh, discrete valued. Right. So all of the features were assumed to be uh, discrete valued. As opposed to this, in this model, uh, in, in, in this section, we're going to start assuming that the features themselves are continuous variables. Right. And the one of the easiest things to uh, model a continuous random variable uh, or continuous variable is through the Gaussian distribution. And that's exactly what Gaussian uh, model does, right? So, the, so in here, so features um, are real valued and modeled as Gaussian. Uh, sir, yeah. Uh, sir, we have not pros and cons of uh, yeah. discriminative or generative classifiers. Uh, so I'm going to come to this maybe in this section as well, um, right after this, uh, when we've discussed Gaussian models. So then I make more jigger pejayenge, uh, and then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. Not in a lot of detail. Um, I'm just going to give you an overview. Okay. Okay, sir. At the same time, let me just make a note here. Uh, the material that I'm using um, is um, is from chapter uh, four of the textbook, uh, Murphy's textbook, and as well as um, CS um, CS two two nine uh, notes from Sanford. So I've used both of these uh, materials to refer, refer to them when, when preparing my notes. You can? All right. So before I talk about the Gaussian model or the models themselves, I would just like to <clears throat> introduce a multivariate Gaussian distribution. Okay. So multivariate Gaussian distribution. So, what is the multivariate Gaussian distribution? Can, does somebody remember what the, so you know what the Gaussian distribution for a single random variable is. And I believe we've also talked about the Gaussian distribution for two random variables, right? Now we're generalizing this and we're saying, Kiji, let X be, uh, let X be a random vector, which is composed of X1, X2, and XD, right? So this is a D-dimensional uh, random vector. And if this follows a multivariate Gaussian distribution, some of the notation that we use uh, for this is that X, we're saying, we say K is Gaussian distributed, with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma. So that's a notation that we use, okay? And sometimes we also use a notation that the probability of X, actually, let me use F of X. So F of small x, so the, Capital X is a random vector, which has a certain joint distribution, which is a D-dimensional joint distribution. That D-dimensional joint distribution evaluated at a D-dimensional point X uh, is equal to some function uh, evaluated at small x for given mean vectors mu and a covariance matrix sigma. Okay, now the question then is, okay, what is this joint distribution given us? So anybody remembers? Jitala. Sir, one over square root two pi whole power D. Yeah. Uh, times 
So covariance matrix for determinant. Yeah. And then exponential per power uh, x minus the mean transpose. Good. So this is one upon two pi raised to pi d by two, which is the square root of two pi raised to pi d times a determinant of the covariance matrix uh, raised to power half, the square root of that, uh, times an e raised to power minus half x minus mu transpose times the inverse of the covariance matrix times x minus mu, right? And where, um, of course, x is a column vector. Mu is also a column vector, right? Um, and the covariance matrix is actually a d by d square matrix, which is actually positive and definite, right? Um, and I mean, it should be clear here, because I'm using a transpose here, because I'm using a transpose here, um, x and mu must be a column vector. Is that clear? Why should it be a column vector? Q Ahmed. Why should it be a column vector? Ahmed, can you hear me? Hello. You can hear me now, right? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, we I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to catch up. I'm not really uh, going with you. You have PCG. Okay. So somebody else, Osama? Uh, so I can already answer. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so matrix multiplication ke alawa bhi, actually, I mean, yes, this is e raised to power, right? So this has to be, because it's a PDF, so this has to be a scalar, right? This has to be a scalar, and the only way it can be scalar is that if this is a column vector, transpose can be a row vector, okay? It's being multiplied by a square matrix, uh, because of which this is going to be a row vector as well, and this is a column vector, so row vector multiplied by a column vector is going to be a scalar. Okay. Uh, what is mu? Mu is just simply the average value, which is expected value of x. And what is sigma? Sigma is the uh, covariance matrix, which is expected value of x minus mu times x minus mu transpose. Right. So mind you. Uh, this is a, this now is a square matrix, which is D cross D, right? So this is D cross D. Okay. When are the random variables independent? I mean, what condition does the covariance matrix need to satisfy for the random variables to be independent of each other? Uh, Osama? Good. Right. So Hassan, uh, you, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, do you want to answer this? Hassan, mm, no, sir. Sir, the question was that you have written in the multivariate question that x is normal with mean mu or covariance yeah. matrix. Variant. Just alternate form in which we PDF to define the PDF. Can you elaborate on that notation? Yeah, so this so is... How is it normal? Okay, okay good. So yes, this, is, this is just... A notation there. I believe you're talking about this, right? Yes, sir. Right. So this is just a notation that many textbooks use. Um, and actually, your your textbook uses this as well. Uh, Murphy's textbook uses that well. So this is really nothing. It's just KG, this is some function. And I'm denoting that function by this mathcal n. Okay? And this function is evaluated at x right for some parameters mu and sigma right okay. and you have the normal distribution could denote the new javascript function exactly, exactly. so whenever you see this 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 n here right 
along with these X and mu's and sigma, this actually refers to that you're not really saying that this is, this is normal, what you're saying is this is actually a function. What is that function? This is that function. This is that not okay. KLM. Okay? So this is all about notation. Otherwise, the concept is exactly what you are already familiar with. Okay? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Um, so what I was saying, huh, diagonal ke mein tha. Uh, the, the point was ke, um, when um, sigma equals diagonal of sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, dot, 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 to sigma d squared, then variables are, are independent. Why are they independent, by the way? So remember, um, when the covariance matrix is a diagonal matrix, what this actually means is that the random variables are uncorrelated, right? And we know for a fact, uh, for Gaussian distributions, for Gaussian random variables, when they're uncorrelated, those random variables must be independent as well. That's why, right? Here, what we want to just briefly mention is um, a maximum likelihood estimation of the parameters. So, um, in other words, what we want to figure out is okay, if you're given the observations. You're given the observation, let's say um, x1 all the way up to xn, and you know that these observations are drawn from a Gaussian distribution which has a certain mean mu and which has a certain covariance matrix sigma. How would you determine the maximum likelihood estimates of the mean vector and the covariance matrix? That's just given by, so, so this maximum likelihood estimate is just simply going to be equal to what? Q Hassan, what do you think? So mu to jo hai, wo to sab ka sum karke, to usse jitne bhi number ye divided by n ho jayega. Yeah, it's just a sample average. Good. It's just a sample average. Okay. What about the maximum likelihood estimate of the Covenis matrix? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not following. So you're not following what? Uh, I'm a little behind as well. I'm so you're a little behind as well. Tell me. Hopefully, uh, you can view the recording later as well. Or can we tell you? Uh, sir, a diagonal uh, matrix. Really, really. So, so you see, I, I'm not, I've not really said that the sigma corresponds to a diagonal matrix. So there's just some covariance matrix out there, right? I know that the x's follow a certain distribution which has a certain covariance, and that is not necessarily diagonal. I wish to estimate what that is, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not doing a proof here. I'm just looking for an intuitive answer. So this would just simply be. Can you tell me something else? What would it be? In this case, summation will be. Summation will be. Right? Summation will be. So x minus mu and x minus mu transpose will be. And because we are doing the averaging, we will be divided by n. Good. Right? So this is mu. It's just that mu is something I don't know. But I'll just replace it with the estimate. Oh, sorry. So I'll just replace it with the estimate and then this is x of i minus mu ml and I just take a transpose for this. Um, this summation is going to be from i equals 1 to n and just going to take the average and which makes intuitive sense. So what you're really saying is this does make intuitive sense, right? This makes a lot of intuitive sense. All you do is 
you take up all of the observations, you find the average of those, right? And that sample average is going to give you an estimate of the mean, what the mean is, right? Now, for the covariance matrix, this is also a sample average. But it's just that it's not a sample average of the vectors themselves, but rather for each i, you're computing the sample covariance. And for each i, you're computing sample covariance, and then you're averaging it over for all, uh, over the entire data set, over, over the entire i. So this is how we would compute the, uh, the maximum likelihood estimate of the, uh, of of sigma as well. Um, for the proof of this, I'm not going to do this here. Uh, so the proof is skipped. Uh, however, if you're interested in finding this is a, is a very, very uh, long and tedious proof that's there in the textbook, I'd urge you to uh, take a look. This is 4.1.3.1, I believe. Okay. All right. All right. So now um, these are just some basics, right? So what we've done is a multivariate Gaussian distribution, right? What are the multivariate Gaussian distributions? Um, and then what is the maximum likely estimate uh, given the training data for those multivariate Gaussian distributions? Now that this is out of the way, we can start focusing on. Uh, what Gaussian based classifiers are. Um, I got a quick question here, Yanpe, just let me know. I, I can pause for a moment uh, and answer any questions. Meanwhile, um, one of the things you could keep on doing is okay, you, you feel free to type in relevant things into the chat box. Okay, relevant is, is the key here. Um, so if, if there's any comment that you have, and you're shy of speaking it out loud, uh, chat box is another thing that we could use, right? So I, this morning, single C class maze was very, very useful. Any questions? Ji, Ji, Rafi. Sir, here we are what we estimate kar exactly? Random vector estimate kar So you're not estimating the random vector. So what you, I'm saying is, you have a data, diya hua hai, right? A training data, you have right? So this is a training data that's given to you, right? And you know that this training data, these are observations, right? So this, this is the key. These are observations. So given these observations, which are capital N observations, you know that these observations are actually drawn from a Gaussian distribution. And that Gaussian distribution has a certain mean vector. And that Gaussian distribution has a certain covariance matrix. Okay. Now, given this observations, your job is to try to estimate what the mean vector was and what the covariance matrix was. Okay. That's what we're trying to estimate. And we're skipping the proof. We're skipping the proof. And if you go through that proof, you do the, the maximum likelihood proof, you will find now the maximum likelihood estimate of the mean vector is nothing but the sample average of the sample average of the of the uh, the mean vector uh, of, of the observations and the covariance matrix the estimate of that covariance matrix is just simply this average using the the observations okay that's what we're trying to estimate okay Afe? Uh, sahi, sir. Sahi, sir. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So this this was all some some background material that we may uh, need to use uh, a little while later. Achari. Ab, let's start with the actual classifier business, right? So this is Gaussian discriminant analysis.
Okay, so this is, uh, I'm gonna use GDA for short, right? Uh, this assumes, what does it assumes? That this assumes that the, that the probability distribution of this random variable of, of the features X, uh, given that your class label is equal to K, that is modeled as a jointly Gaussian distribution evaluated at the features X for some mu C and some sigma. So it's just K here, sorry. So there's a K here and there's a K here. For K equals one, two, all the way up to capital C, where capital C it was what is a number of classes, right? So capital C is the, this is the number of classes. Okay, so let me just pause and try to try, uh, make sure that everyone absorbs what this says. What this says is, okay, given a class label K, given a class label K, Given a class label K, you may have a question that I write well. Yes, sir. Right. So this yes, sir. Okay. So given a class label K, I'm going to model my features as jointly Gaussian distributed, which have a certain mean vector mu K and a certain covariance matrix sigma K, right? Where this mu K and sigma K are indexed by K. In other words, if the class label changes, the mean vector changes and the covariance matrix changes as well. Okay, is that clear? So for example, I could say, okay, let those class labels be, uh, let this be a binary problem. This would be Y equals men and Y equals women. Because the men and women, there are two classes there. Okay, and let those features X be let's say height and weight, right? So those are height and weight are X1 and X2. So those are two random variables. And what I'm saying is, okay, okay, given that the class feature is K, is, is, is men, for men, the height and the weight satisfy or follow a Gaussian distribution with a certain mean and a certain covariance matrix. Whereas for women, the height and the weight follow another Gaussian distribution, uh, still follow Gaussian distribution with another mean and another covariance matrix. Okay, so that would be one example of it. Okay, so that's what the Gaussian, uh, what the GDA is going to assume. Okay, now given this model, given this model, um, how would you, and given training data, so given Uh, so my screen doesn't appear up there. Hold on. So, this session end? No. Why? 40 minutes. No, no. So, this is not being... So, we have a pro license. So, you, did you get a message or something? No, sir. That's so, so, the session won't end, hopefully. Uh, so, we bought a pro license. Um, so... Let me open up the list of numbers. Okay. Hey, so Vesse bhi, uh, Zoom, ne, I think during this pandemic, they have uh, removed nee, that format. Nee, Agar aap schedule kar. Haan, so main, uh, agar aap schedule karte hai, that's I don't, something I don't know. Like in uh, instant meetings, I'm to many, many Charlie's and Basatum. So, unki marzi hoti hai, mein. 
Achha, Barang, so we're back here. So given training data, and so that training data would be um, x1, y1, all the way up to x, n, and y, n. So how would you determine the ML estimates? So the first job for, 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 the, uh, for the Gaussian discriminant analysis is gonna be given that training data, right? So you have this training data that's given to you. Right, for this training data, how would you determine estimates of, estimates of these variables, mu one, sigma one, mu two, sigma two, and so on and so forth? Kya so it's related to matching like the estimation that I had earlier at the top. Can you answer that? Yes, Hassan. Question after. Answer the answer the next year is in the to is my basam. Yeah, one particular Joe excise and Joe. NC को जो C class को belong करते हैं सिर्फ उन particular को sum कर लेंगे और divide कर देंगे NC से the number of elements of that class और इसी तरह उसमें भी NC different हो जाए NC वही रहेगा covariance estimation में X I और वही ले लेंगे सिर्फ good right so does somebody else want to explain this maybe again uh, so, Hassan, you're perfectly right here. It's perfectly correct. Erza? Very nice. Uh, how about somebody else? Uh, Anam? Did you get what they were saying? Uh, G, sir. G, uh, so, what were they saying? Ke aap, uh, different uh, jo classes hai, unke liye mu or sigma lena. Yes, good. So different classes ke liye, you need to estimate them separately, right? So you, her class ka different yes, mu, ka, her class ka different sigma. Ka. And then what you do yes. is aap, aap data set may say you just identify those class labels which correspond to, for example, y equals one. And all of the points to the y equals one ke liye, this will give you an estimate of the mu one and sigma one. So now all of the class labels which correspond to y equals two, we're gonna give you the estimates of the class uh, of the mean vector mu uh, two and sigma two. So if I were to write this mathematically, um, I can just simply say that mu k hat is just equal to summation i equals one to n, the indicator function, y i equals k times x i divided by divided by kya hoga? So divided by the number number hona chahiye kya hona chahiye hamza wo again aap summation kar loge with indicator agar aap indicator or which is actually equal to the number of uh, points number of the class k uh, the number of points which belong to class label k. Okay, so this was xi here, and then this is summation i equals one to n indicator function yi equals k. Okay, so this would be the the estimate of the mean vector. What about uh, the estimate of the covariance matrix? Um, so let me see aesthetics. Okay. So sigma k sigma k hat on the other hand is just simply gonna be summation i equals one to n the indicator function y i equals k times x i minus mu k 
के हैट टाइम्स एक्स आई माइनस म्यू के हैट ट्रांसपोज डिवाइडेड बाय i equals 1 to n the indicator function y i equals k theek okay, hai so this is how you would um, estimate so given the training data now you know that the training data follows a gaussian distribution and it, if it follows that gaussian distribution um, you are required to find the you are required to find the estimate Uh, of each and every one of those distributions, the mean vector and the covariance matrix, and you do that through through these expressions that that I've highlighted here, through this expression here, and through this expression here. Okay, so this would be the training set, training point, uh, or the training step, right? So this would be. Um, so this would be. training or learning model parameters right what would be the next step once you've learned the model what do you want to do next ab kya kare prediction uh, prediction pe jaye a prediction pe aa jayenge right so you've learned the model from the training data and now once you've learned the model ab aapke paas koi na koi ek height or weight for example ka ek pair aata hai and you're required to find whether this person who has a certain height and weight is that more likely to be a man or is is that more likely to be a woman theek hai so that would be the prediction step right so for prediction or the testing step all right so so that's and we so so prediction kisa karenge hum so ha ji kisa kare prediction kaun bola ki ki properties nikal ke uh, maximum choose karna yes so you would use the uh, once again the bayesian approach of it right you would say when then we find out the probability that the point that i'm trying to test belongs to the man class or and let me also find the probability that it belongs to the woman class right and whichever is higher that would be my best prediction for the estimates that i had earlier so the estimates that i had earlier okay so let's do that so how do we predict so i am going to compute the probability that y equals k sir thodi screen upar kar de thodi upar kar de nahi sir the ulta i think thoda pura lag dekh nahi last line yes sir last line dekhni okay 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 right upar to niche kar dena is angle sir right so given x and given the parameter estimates given the parameter estimates uh where what i mean by the parameter estimates are what um ye jo theta hat hai na that refers to the set mu k hat and sigma k hat for um, k equals 1 to c the set of all the parameters that i've estimated this is the this is the set of all the parameters uh, that i've estimated okay so given those set of parameters that i've estimated given the point that i want to test i just want to find out what the probability that the my class level is equal to k is that's what i want to find out okay this so okay so what is this equal to acha main upar kar lu free yes sir right so what is this 
this probability equal to? How do I compute this probability? Do I have information to compute this probability? Do I have enough information to compute this probability? Kaun answer karega? You have to kar le yaar, please. So, man, I'm, otherwise I'm going to pick Osama ka naam sabse upar hai, Osama. Class priority kahi hongi? Ji? Yeah, good. Class priority kahi hongi, okay. Or kya chahi hoga? एंड Theta hat times probability that y equals k given theta hat, and then there's a actually something there in the denominator as well, which is basically probability of x given theta. It's just said that the probability of x given theta is not really a function of the class label, so I can just say that this is actually directly proportional to that. So there's a proportionality constant involved. It says that that the proportionality constant is not a function of the class label so therefore i'm not really interested in computing what the proportionality constant is you can i could compute it if i want to but i don't need to all right now um and my class prediction is just simply therefore going to be y hat is just simply going to be the argument uh, max of k equals 1 to all the way up to c of what probability that y equals k given x and given theta hat right so this is the same as argument max k equals 1 to blah blah all the way up to c of what i'm going to do is i'm just going to replace this thing here this thing here into this thing here okay so this is the probability of um x given y equals k theta hat times probability y equals k given theta hat right um ye wo proportionality constant kya gaya yahan se where did that go kyun hamza liyaqat where did that go सर हम बेसिकली आर मैक्स फाइंड कर रहे हैं ना तो आई थिंक जो मतलब कि जो प्रोबेबिलिटी मैक्सिमम आएगी वो हमारा आ जाएगा उसका या गुड सो गुड एक्सीलेंट सो देयर इज अ देयर इज अ कांस्टेंट हियर राइट देयर इज एक्चुअली अ कांस्टेंट हियर सो आई कैन से अनदर वे आई कैन राइट दिस इज एक्चुअली ये जो इक्वालिटी ही थी दिस वाज एन इक्वालिटी हियर एंड देयर वाज अ कांस्टेंट सम कांस्टेंट सी राइट सो इफ इफ देयर इज अ कांस्टेंट सी हियर आई सो लेट मी नॉट यूज सी सी इन दैट So some constant k, right? So if there was some constant k here, and so that means there would have been constant k here. It that k does not affect my optimization, right? Does not affect the arg max. Okay. Acha, Fareed, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I'm confused. Or I'm that theta uh, theta exactly is what? Which one represents that? This theta is our mu k. theta hat is a set theek hai so chalo agar aap ye is tarah represent kare ke theta hat jo na ye ye hai mu 1 sigma 1 mu 2 sigma 2 all the mu c or sorry mu c or sigma c सिर्फ सो ये जस्ट अ नोटेशन 
अच्छा अच्छा सही ये जिस नोटेशन इसाइन के जी मैं बजाय इसके बजाय इसके कि मैं ये सारी चीजें यहां पे लिखता फिरूं हर दफा राइट आई विल जस्ट यूज दिस वन वन वेरिएबल टू रिप्रेजेंट ऑल ऑफ दिस ठीक है ठीक है अच्छा एनी मोर क्वेश्चन ओके सो फिर देन वॉट वाई डू अच्छा बाई दू दिस वन अनदर स्मॉल पॉइंट हियर विच इज के आई 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 एम यूजिंग दिस पी हियर सो डू नॉट बी कंफ्यूज बाई दिस पी आई एम कैन यूज पी टू रेफर टू बोथ द प्रोबेबिलिटीज एज वेल एज टू पी डी एफ एंड वेदर इज ए पी डी एफ और वेदर इज ए पी एम एफ इज कैन बी इम्प्लाइड बाई द कॉन्टेक्स्ट सो बिकॉज इज इज अ कंटिन्यूस एंड अवेलेबल so p of x would implicitly mean this is actually a uh, pdf okay so that's something i want to make clear right so that i don't have to switch between f and p okay so um so aage kisan chale um in order to maximize this then let me take the log of this so because maximizing this is exactly the same as maximizing the log of this because the log is actually a, a monotonically increasing function so this is arg max k equals 1 to all the way up to capital c so log of probability x given y equals k and theta hat plus log probability y equals k given theta hat ठीक है सो एक्चुअली थीटा हेड के अंदर जो है ना वो और भी चीजें शामिल है क्या चीज शामिल है सो पाई इज भी शामिल है सो पाई के हेड इज दी प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ दैट वाई इक्वल्स के द क्लास प्रायर्स ठीक है वो वो भी थीटा के अंदर ही शामिल है राइट सो दैट समथिंग आई रिज्यूम के अब इवेल्युएटेड ऑलरेडी सो यहां से क्या गया राइट सो वॉट इज दिटी ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स गिवन वाईक्स के एंड थीटा हेड सो रिमेम्बर दिस इज अवसिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बेस्ड ऑन आर और द मॉडल दैट वेव टेकन ऑलरेडी राइट सो दिस इज अवसिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड गावसिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में सो दिस रेडी इज this really is this expression so this expression number 1 right for a given mu and for a given sigma okay for a given mu and for a given sigma so this is what you have here right now there are constants outside the constants outside the which do not affect so let me write everything down so this is one of the challenges of not having a board so this is log this is 1 upon 2 pi raised to power d by 2 sigma k raised to power half exponential of x minus mu k and there is a minus half here so minus half and there is a exponential here and this is sigma k inverse x minus mu k plus log of pi k ठीक है so does this affect the optimization no it won't 
I want which is a constant, right? Would this affect the optimization? Yes. Yes, because it's constant. a function of k. What about these things? So this will also affect the optimization. This will also affect the optimization. Okay. So I can say okay, this is equal to argument max k equals one to c, and this is uh, minus half x minus mu k transpose sigma k inverse times x minus mu k. What you get am I getting? Ten minute wali term. Up ke saath chahiye. Chalo, let me write this out first, and let me then ask you, "Me kya chiz miss karna bhi?" Kya chiz rehti hai? Con Nasail pick a name and ask them. Ab wali tabhi tabri desh nahi bola. Sir, log minus log of wo uska determinant of sigma k. मल्टीप्लाई करो आई जस्ट हैव टू मिनिमाइज सी and this is half x minus mu k transpose sigma k inverse x minus mu k uh, and this is plus half log of sigma k um and minus log of pi k okay um If I multiply everything by two, to make things easier, I can simplify it. Uh, which is this is just two, right? So this is what you want to minimize, right? Now, the first thing that you see in this optimization objective function. is this thing here i mean does this look i mean is this something that you've seen anywhere the svd type koi decomposition hai uh, ha okay uh, svd decomposition to nahi hai lekin usse chale i because we know hum usko agar evd bhi kare to it can broken down vector side wale aapke eigen vectors okay. on center okay so there yes there is a relationship लेकिन चले लेट मी गिव यू वन स्पेसिफिक केस फॉर दिस व्हाट इफ सिग्मा के फॉर ऑल के वाज एक्चुअली अ डायगोनल मैट्रिक्स वाज द आइडेंटिटी मैट्रिक्स चले ऐसा कह लेते हैं सॉर्ट ऑफ वेटेड एवरेज टाइप व्हिच इज वन रियल हां चले मैं आई एम पुटिंग अप अ वेरी स्पेशल केस व्हिच इज मे बी अ वन एक्सट्रीम एंड आई एम गोना पिक ऑन समबडी हु इज टू आंसर मी दिस मनाल ने नहीं बोला अभी तक right so if i have sigma k as a diagonal matrix or in other words the identity matrix okay so what is a sagri identity matrix hota so let me write this out so agar ye identity matrix hota so this would have been x minus mu k transpose times x minus mu k uh can you see the screen nine अच्छा अच्छा मिनट ओके सो सिग्मा वॉज अ डायगल मेट्रिक्स दिस दिस इज वॉट यू वुड हैव हैड Right, this term would have been this term. Right, if sigma was this, the inverse of a uh, inverse of an identity matrix is is identity itself. ये चीज़ होती है, right? ये क्या है? So add to norm square. Okay. 
L2 norm squared, which is which is some distance or something. Manal, we call it distance. Hai. Euclidean distance, I think. Exactly. This is the Euclidean distance squared. So this is the Euclidean distance, which is actually uh, the L2 norm squared. Okay. So if if this diagonal matrix was uh, this covariance matrix had this been an identity matrix, this term would actually correspond have corresponded to a uh, a Euclidean distance between what and what? It would have been the Euclidean distance between where the features reside and what the centroid of a particular feature is, right? And if I were to ignore both of these terms for now, let me just, for ease of analysis, if I were to ignore these terms for now, right? So all you would have had was to, uh, was to, was to minimize over K this Euclidean distance. So what classification kya bajati? Classification ye bajati, you are given a feature set, kind of feature set given hai, right? All you do is you compute the Euclidean distance of this feature from the centroid of men, for example, and compute the Euclidean distance of this feature that's given to you as a test from the centroid, which is the mean vector of women, right? And you, your classification prediction or class prediction is going to be that class, which is, which has the centroid closest to whatever data is given to you here. Okay. So, you can see that this is the same thing or the same thing. If you say you'd say that's my decision. Okay. Is that clear? Had this been, a, had this been a, an identity matrix. Okay. Now, this is, this is just minimizing the Euclidean distance. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Now, this is not uh, an identity matrix here. Right. So, what is, there's a special term for for this this thing here where sigma is not an identity matrix what do you, do you does somebody know what the term is is koi distance ko bada special naam kehte hain this is called the sum distance aur isse pehle ek term aati hai aur iske uski bande ka naam hai It starts with an M. Ah, uh, Lanobis? Yes. So this is called the Mahana Lobis distance. Okay. So if I were to ignore these terms for now, so let's say, um, so, so if uh, classes were equally likely, and sigma k's were equal to some sigma for all k. In other words, the covariance matrix does not change with the class labels. Then prediction would have been equal to what? Prediction would just be minimize the, the Mahana Lopez distance. I, that's what your prediction is going to be based on. Right? If they are not equally likely, and if they are, uh, those covariance matrices are not um, identically distributed with, with respect to the uh, covariance matrix, then these are the additional terms that you have to incorporate as well. Right? Mahanalobis distance ki thori si intuition maybe dekh lete hain ke ye, what this really is doing is, what this sigma does is, as somebody said here, when Mekhan Atala said, Ki weighted average ko hai. So it's actually a weighted distance, right? Um, so if it's a diagonal matrix and all of the diagonal entries are equal, so this is just a Euclidean distance, right? So you're actually a circle ke put contours them. What if I um, gave you another example, which is sort of a very specific example. So, in, so, so if what if sigma 
was um, was just a diagonal matrix. Sigma one squared and ten a sigma two squared and sigma sigma d squared. If just for diagonal matrix, so what this would have meant was okay, there's some features that are going to be weighted more when computing distance than some of the other features. Okay, there are some features which are going to be weighted more when you're computing the distance, and there are some features that are going to be weighted less when you're computing the, uh, the this distance. So your distance SMA uh, you can actually show that this is going to be equal to summation over so k going so on. going to be summation over i going from 1 to d x i minus mu k i whole squared times 1 upon sigma i squared. This is something you can show on, I mean, you just, just verify that this is actually true, right? So this is going to be a weighted distance measure. And for this weighted distance measure, we see if sigma i is small, if sigma i is small, this distance is going to be very high weighted. The, 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 the contribution of that coordinate is going to be very high. If sigma i is large, the contribution because of that coordinate i is going to be small. Okay, Does that make sense? Why would it make sense? Yes, sir. It makes sense. Why does uh, it make sense? Because if the variance is less, the class mean is more than the mean. More likely that the mean is more than More likely that the mean is more than the mean. This means that if you do get a point, if you do get a point which is quite far away from the mean, right? if you do get a point which is quite far away from the mean, then it's very unlikely that this point actually corresponded to that class because the variance is so small. It would have been very, very likely that my mean is around the center. If this mean is a dual point, it means that it's not a class. Right? That's what the sigma does. That's what the sigma does. Right? If this is small, it's a very, very high weightage. Uh, if it's large, on the other hand, and the variance was other thing, so you have a point centroid se baut dur mil bhi gaya. So yes, that would have been possible. That would have been likely. So that's why it's not weighted too much. Okay. Uh, and and remember, you are ultimately minimizing the Mahanalobis distance. So the higher the Mahanalobis distance, the less likely you're going to be uh, that that point is going to belong to a certain class, right? So that's the intuition of Mahanalobis distance when they are diagonal matrices. What if they are not diagonal? What the matrix? What if the matrix is not diagonal? I am not going to go in a lot of details here. But in actual, when distance computation, may when it's not diagonal, the axis becomes important as well. And here, some projections or linear algebra se thoda sa pata chalta hai ke when is not diagonal, um, so so when it's not diagonal, to aapke jo contours hote hain, wo Something of this sort, right? So these are contours of Mahanalobis distance. So contours are kyaam rado tiyo se? So contours means ki remember this is, if this is a two dimensional vector. So this is x1 and this is x2. Right. If I compute the Gaussian distribution, right. So this Gaussian distribution is going to be uh, on top of this in the third dimension up top, up top, right. And for all of the points on the x1 and x2 plane, all of these points on this circle here are going to correspond to exactly the same probability density. All of the points here are going to correspond to exactly the same probability. All of the points here are going to correspond to exactly the same. Uh, density and that should be clear because okay, this is actually uh, an equation of an ellipse because and these are ellipsoids right uh, 
Um, and therefore, as you move further and further away, that becomes less and less likely. Here, visible that here the variance is more, here the variance is less, and so on and so forth. So, I will not go into more details. Um, and that's all I would say. Okay. If this is not diagonal, the direction in which you are also makes an impact. Okay? Yes, Rafi. Sir, what we are doing in MD distance is sigma square. Are these all eyes for scaling the same? No, no, no. They are not the same. You don't have a difference. You don't have a difference. So, are you here? Yes. Right? So, these are these are these eyes, sigma eyes are different. So sigma one may not be the same as sigma two. Sigma two may not be the same as sigma three. Let me get scaling in key, like units in that sense. Yeah, so uh, units like normalize ni normalize ni hogi uh, in what sense? Matlab absolute variance to matlab alag ho hi sakti hai, sabke, lekin I think wo relative type kuch. Okay, so you're saying that ye, ye this normalize kar hai, sigma is normalized. I'm asking that if the scaling is different, if they're different units, then if you have values of square... Okay, good. Right, so remember, like, you know, the way sigma i's have been computed, they have been computed for the units in which they actually resided in. Okay, so inherent scaling will already be here. So what you're saying is, so remember, Jab, uh, let me pull that up. So this thing that you see here, Rafi, this thing you see here. Yeah. Okay, is me when you're computing those sigmas, x sigma one ko compute karne ke liye x1 is small or right? so, yeah. Sigma two ko compute karne ke liye training data mein x2 hi is small or yonge, right? So if x1 has a different unit than x2, then those different units would have already been incorporated inside the estimate of sigma one and sigma two. Pehle incorporated hai when you're doing the estimation. Yeah. Okay. So those have already been incorporated when you when you did the estimation. So if that's what you when you did the estimation, yahan pe bhi, yahan pe bhi ye estimate say already on units ke under normalized say. And this x1 or x2 once again only units say derive over here. So, so there's no inconsistency here. So yeah, so I'm going to go. Okay. Yes, Fareed. Sir, what you have written is if classes were equally likely, this is the point of understanding this point. Okay, so that's why, because so I believe what you're referring to is that this is what I wrote, right? Yes, sir. Right. So if, see, if, if when I say that these classes were equally likely, if they were not equally likely, right, this term would have impacted your optimization. Mm, yes, sir. This term here, right? Yes, sir. So then if this would have impacted your optimization, then it would not have been simply the case of just minimizing the Mahan lobbyist distance because there's an additional term that you need to incorporate. Right? So if in, in a world there were, where there were only men and very, very few women, right? Then in order for you to do that optimization, you need to account for the class label, the cl class priors. Okay, then it's not going to be about just simply minimizing the Mahanalobis distance. With the Mahanalobis distance, with the same thing, this is also going to be incorporated in the same way. Okay, sir. Okay, but if they're equally likely, then this goes away from the optimization, this thing goes away from the optimization. If they're uh, the same covariance, this also goes away from the optimization. And you're just left with minimizing the Mahanalobis distance. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Uh, any more questions? Sir, this time the kids will start to come to the second class. What will they start? The second class. But no one is coming today. I wish that they will come to this class. Just a little bit. 
नॉर्मल सी थोड़ी सी हो राइट क्लासीफायर okay it's not a discriminative classifier right despite that we say this is gaussian discriminant analysis kyunki ultimately uh ek boundaries create hoti hain which we have given talk about in the next class uh, but i just want to point out ki this may be a misnomer if you will this of discriminative analysis theek hai is actually a generative classifier right that's what the point i wanted to make theek hai Acha, one of the other things that you can try to show is here the main screen was saying so ke ji the boundaries you can show that the boundaries between class labels for gda turn out to be quadratic boundaries theek hai uh, i may assign this as a homework right ke the boundaries between two class labels for example are going to turn out to be uh, a quadratic boundary as opposed to the linear discriminant analysis which we're going to do next on the next in the next class theek hai uh yahan pe i'll i'll stop uh with uh, with this content and maybe let me stop the recording as well